Before we begin our discussion of the physical properties of water, it's worth reminding ourselves of the polarity of the water molecule and the hydrogen bond that forms between two water molecules as a result of this polarity. This hydrogen bonding and this polarity is responsible for the physical properties of water. The first property we'll look at is buoyancy. When an object is immersed in a fluid like water, the water exerts an upward force on that object. We call this the buoyant force. That object also experiences a force pulling it down, and that's what we know as gravity. If the density of the object, in this case the tennis ball, is lower than the density of fluid, in this case the water, then the buoyant force will be greater than gravity, thus resulting in the object floating. In contrast, if the density of the object is greater than that of the fluid, in this case the water, then the buoyant force will be less than gravity and so the object will sink. This is significant to, in particular, organisms that live in water, because overall living organisms have a density that is quite close to that of water, so the buoyant force is very similar to the force of gravity, and that allows organisms like this fish here to float in water, and therefore to use water as a habitat. In contrast, air is much less dense than living organisms, and so it doesn't provide a lot of buoyancy. Therefore, organisms that have to fly through the air have to generate lift in order to stay airborne. The second property to consider is viscosity. Viscosity is a term that describes like the stickiness of a fluid. In other words, how easily it can flow as a result of internal friction between the molecules. Although this animation is oversimplified, pure water has a much greater viscosity than other organic solvents because of that hydrogen bonding we mentioned earlier. The hydrogen bonding increases the internal friction between water molecules that results in water having a higher viscosity than organic solvents. What's also notable is that seawater with its dissolved salts and other solutes has an even higher viscosity than pure water. In either case, this is important to living organisms because organisms that use water as a habitat or seawater as a habitat have to expend more energy to move through it as the viscosity increases. In contrast, since the viscosity of air is about 50 times smaller than that of water at the same temperature, organisms that live in the air don't have to expend as much energy to move through the air as they'd have to if they had to move through water. Finally, it's interesting to note that the solutes found in blood increase its viscosity even further. So the blood moving through organisms actually doesn't flow as easily as pure water itself would. Now let's look at the property of thermal conductivity. This table shows the thermal conductivity of a variety of different materials. Thermal conductivity is the rate at which heat passes through a material. And as you can see, water has a relatively high thermal conductivity compared to other materials such as air. This means that compared to air, water allows heat to pass through it at a much greater rate. In fact, air only allows heat to pass through it at about 5% of the rate that water does. And also, it's worth noting that fats only allow heat to pass through it at about 25% of the rate that water does. So in either case, water allows heat to pass through it at the greatest rate. This is significant to living organisms because aquatic warm-blooded animals are at a much greater risk of losing body heat than land-based warm animals because water has a high thermal conductivity. Some organisms such as this whale have a layer of blubber to insulate them from such heat loss. However, when it comes to blood, the high thermal conductivity of water is a very useful property this is because the high water content of the blood allows it to transport heat from parts of the body where the heat is generated, such as in the muscles, to parts of the body that might need more heat or parts where you can dissipate excess heat to the environment. In contrast, since air has a lower thermal conductivity than water, 
It conducts heat away from the bodies of organisms such as this bird at a lower rate than water would. Therefore, less heat is lost to the environment in air than would be in water. The final property we'll look at is specific heat capacity. Specific heat capacity is how much energy it takes to raise the temperature of one gram of a substance by one degree C or one Kelvin. In the case of water, water has a very high specific heat capacity and this means that it requires an awful lot of energy to raise the temperature of one gram of water by one degree C. In comparison, air has a lower specific heat capacity than water, and that means, relatively speaking, it requires less energy to raise the temperature of one gram of air by one degree C than it does to raise the temperature of one gram of water by one degree C. The significance of this to living organisms is that the temperature of aquatic habitats remains relatively stable compared with air temperatures, and so aquatic habitats are more thermally stable than the air and terrestrial habitats. Since birds and mammals are mostly composed of water, it also helps them to maintain constant body temperatures. Now as a quick review and application, let's look at two examples that the IB specifically wants you to know, the black-throated loon and the ringed seal. These are both sizable organisms that have overlapping habitats and they both spend time on land and in water. The black-throated loon flies, and since air is less dense than water, it has less buoyant force. This means that it requires more energy to generate lift and remain in flight for the bird than it does for the seal to remain afloat in water. In contrast, remember that water is more viscous than air, and so the seal requires more energy to move through the water compared to the black-throated loon moving through air. However, since the water also has a greater thermal conductivity than air, it conducts heat away from the seal's body. In comparison, the air is an insulator for the black-throated loon. Finally, water also has a higher specific heat capacity than air, and this means it resists changes in temperature and therefore provides a more stable thermal environment for the seal than the air does for the black-throated loon.